Father. I'd like to greet those on live stream who are joining us. And this morning I wanted to uh, talk about uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 18. There it starts off and says, And all things are of God. And this is a phrase, a statement that had uh, popped up at, at me and I took notice of and uh, caught my attention. That of all things are of God. You know, the Spirit has spoken quite clearly about uh, concerning the working of the Lord as well as his absolute sovereignty over all things. And uh, we're speaking of all things. And I like how the scripture is pretty plain. It doesn't um, say some things or a few, few things, but it tells us that all things are of him. I think of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. At the very first verse, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That takes a God that is over all things. To be able to take something without form that was void, darkness, and to create something within that and create the world and everything that is in it. That is a God that has all power and who is over all things. Amen. I also thought, <clears throat> what, or I also like what Nehemiah, verse 9, or chapter 9, verse 6 tells us it says, Thou, even thou, art Lord alone, and thou hast made the heavens the earth the, the heavens of heavens and all their host the earth and all things that are therein the seas and all that is therein and thou hast perver preservest them all and the host of heaven worship thee so it tells us that he has made the heavens the heavens of heavens the sea and all that is within them as well and so we worship a god who is over all things I think of um, Paul in Acts chapter 17 where he had visited Athens and he had uh, was walking and he saw the altar that was to the unknown God. And then he took the time to tell the people uh, of who this was. And in Acts chapter 17 and verse number 24, he told them, he said that God God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands as though he, is, he needed anything, seeing he gives life to all and all things. And so we serve a God that gives life to all and, and all things. When speaking of God and Christ, there is nothing that is not under their feet. There is nothing that is not subject to them and over which they do not have absolute authority or control over. There is no such thing as something or someone who is not subject to God and over which God does not exercise absolute control. You know, I was considering um, the absolute power of God that he is over Satan. He has power over him. The scripture says that Satan is the God of this world, but yet Satan is still under God Almighty. Amen. I thought of the account of Job when Job came before God and he asked um, to be able to um, do, do or afflict Job with certain things. And the first time he came, God said only upon himself put not thy hand and so there was a limitation there was only a certain um there was only certain things that satan could do and then the second time when he came also god said uh, he is in thine hand but save his life and so god has the absolute power and satan Amen. obeys him in that if there is something or someone that can exercise their will without it going through the throne of heaven, then God would not be over all things. But we know that that is not, but we know that nothing happens without God knowing about it or without it going 
through him and his throne. Amen. In uh, First Chronicles, as we continue to consider the consider God who is over all things, First um, Chronicles chapter twenty nine and verse number eleven says, "Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory." and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom o lord and thou art exalted as head above all both riches and honor come to thee and thou reignest over all and in thine hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to make great and yes. to give strength to yeah. all yeah. and um i i like what is is said here of that the, the greatness, power, glory, victory, and and majesty that all, that all belong to Him. We find in uh, Proverbs 16 and verse number four tells us that all things are for Himself. Also, Daniel chapter two and verse twenty tells us that He changes the times and seasons, and He removes kings and He sets up kings because He is over all. His dominion is from generation to generation. He doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. That's because he is over all. He determined the time set for, set for them and the exact places where they should live. Acts chapter 17 tells us because he is over all. Also of him and through him and to him are all things. Romans chapter 11, verse 36. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 6 tells us, But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. <clears throat> Uh, Ephesians 4 and verse number 6 <clears throat> says that one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And then lastly, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 15 start, says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him we are, for by him were all things created that is in heaven and that is that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and, and by him all things consist. So not, on, not only is God over all things concerning the things that, are, that uh, he created and the things that are upon this earth, but he is the God of all all things concerning salvation as well Amen. because um, without a God who was over all things there would be no salvation for each one of us Amen. in our um, in our text there where we started off in um, uh, first Corinthians actually second Corinthians second second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 18, it said that all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. And so it, it, had, it takes a God who is over all things, who can determine before the earth was even made what, how he was going to bring salvation for, for us and for all men. That takes a God who is over all things, who is able to, to take a people who was against him, who were enemies toward him, hostile toward him, and to bring them to himself and to reconcile them. So this morning as we are here to worship the God that is over all things, we, we come to hear about him, to uh, be edified through his word, through able ministers who are going to be speaking to us today. 
uh, as we desire to learn more about this God who is our God who is over all things. Um, have a word of prayer for Brother Aaron as he brings the class for us this morning. Heavenly Father God, we come before you and we're thankful that we can meet with our brothers and sisters to be able to um, come and uh, be encouraged and come and, and hear your word and, we, and to come and be able to, uh, as we anticipate what we will uh, hear from you and about you here this morning, we pray that you would be with Brother Aaron as he <clears throat> brings the class, that you would uh, supply to him, provide him all that he is in need of to do so, to minister. We praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.